Welcome to my presentation on Judging a Commit by Its Cover. This is a paper written by me, Eddie Antonio Santos, and my supervisor, Dr. Abram Hindle. Imagine you're browsing the commit log of a code repository. You're reading a lot of messages that look something like this. There's a regularity to the commit messages you're reading. They often start with a verb like fix, add, change, or remove. The messages, while curt, are straightforward and to the point. They tersely describe what happened in the commit. This is a usual commit message. You keep scrolling, and you may find something like this. This incoherent tragedy is an example of an unusual commit message. Unlike the previous message, it does not reflect any regularity. It does not explain what happened in the commit. As a software developer, it makes me suspicious. My gut instinct tells me something went wrong in this commit. Very wrong. So our question is, should developers trust their instincts? Is the commit bad just because its message is bad? To test this, we'll need a few things. A way to determine the quality of the commit, a corpus of real commits, and a way to assign an unusualist rank to each commit message. Then, we just check if code quality is correlated with commit message unusualness. For commit quality, we mine TravisCI.org. TravisCI is a continuous integration service, free to use for open source projects. Once configured, Travis will clone, build, and test your project in a clean virtualized environment. That means every push or pull request is assigned a build status. Build status can be one of the following. Passed, failed, or errored. Errored means something went wrong before Travis could start the build. This is often caused by typos in the build configuration or unmatched dependencies. A build fails when either its test fails or when the project fails to compile. To collect commits, we use BOA. Using a BOA script, we filtered projects having at least 200 AST nodes and more than six commits. This filters out trivial projects. Then, we checked for the presence of a Travis YAML file that indicates that a project uses Travis CI. After filtering, nearly 13,000 commits from over 2,500 projects fit the criteria described. Now with commits and associated build statuses, we can rate the unusualness of their messages. For this, we trained n-gram language models. N-gram models are commonly used in natural language processing to measure the frequency, regularity, and probability of text. In our case, we can measure the unusualness of each commit message. The basic principle is this. Say you have some words. We count each overlapping n of these words. In this case, we choose n equals 3. Then, we count how many times each n words appears in the corpus together. For example, I'm a little appears in the corpus 500 times. A little teapot appears in the corpus 100 times. To measure the unusualness of the message as a whole, we calculate the average negative log likelihood of each component n-gram. This is called cross-entropy. The higher the cross-entropy, the more difficult it is for the model to explain a given message. That is, the higher the cross-entropy, the more unusual the message is. So how does this apply to commit messages? We consider the following messages to be fairly usual, yet our model may not agree. The reason are these highlighted words. Well, it's not unusual to see an issue number, a file name, or even a git SHA in a commit. Our model would consider these one-of-a-kind words as very unusual indeed. Enter tokenization. Our commit messages are actually a sequence of characters, but what an n-gram model operates on is a sequence of words, or tokens. The process of converting a sequence of characters into a sequence of tokens is called tokenization. We've made some decisions in tokenization in order to prevent the usual, but globally rare tokens from appearing unusual. We call these semantic substitutions. In the following message, we perform the semantic substitution of replacing the token of an actual file name with a token representing the presence of a file name. Similarly, we replace the issue number here with a token representing any issue number. In addition, we made a substitution in this message to replace the troublesome SHA hash with a token that means any SHA hash. In addition to issue numbers, file names, and SHA hashes, we also made heuristics for URIs, semantic version numbers, and Java method names, among others. Finally, now that we have tokens, we can train some n-gram models. We used the leave one out methodology to train models. We trained n models where n is the number of projects. For every project, we plucked that project out of the corpus and trained the model on the remaining projects. This way, each model has no prior knowledge of the project of interest. Then, we ask the model to rate the unusualness of each commit message through the analog of cross-entropy. The results are as follows. This is a graph of cross-entropy, or increasing unusualness. 
Commits are categorized by build status, passed in green, failed in purple, and erred in orange. The outlier bin to the left is made up of messages of the form, update file pattern. It's not obvious from this graph whether the amount of failed or errored commits changes as unusualness increases. However, viewing the same data as an ECDF plot may make things a bit more clear. There's a tiny area of the ECDF graph where passed and failed differed. Failed commits has to catch up to passed commits as unusualness increases before cross entropy of five bits, right here. A Wilcoxon rank sum test confirms that the distributions of failed and passed commits are significantly different. Zooming in, the proportions of failed commits in purple is lagging behind passed commits in green. It has to catch up with the other distributions, so the proportion of failed commits does, in fact, increase as cross entropy increases. A little bit. Additionally, we calculated Pearson's linear correlation. We obtained a positive coefficient of correlation of about 0.248 with a 99% confidence interval that does not contain zero. A weak but statistically significant correlation. Given this result, are unusual commits more likely to break the build? Yeah, a little bit. Should you care? Eh, probably not. There are statistics... There is a statistically significant increase in failed commits as commit message unusualness increases. However, this increase happens well within the realm of usualness. As such, we do not recommend judging the quality of a commit by the quality of its commit message. Links to the code we use to crunch numbers as well as the BOA script used to filter commits is available in the description below. Thanks for watching!